fourth and final installment of the Chambers Health and Wellness Series presented by Beaumont Health and Health Guided. Um, we're happy to have you this morning live. As I've mentioned all along, um, we believe the real value of these programs though is that we're building this library of, of informational webinars on a whole host of different topics. And um, what we've been doing with these, while we're happy that people are able to join us live, um, we do record these, we post them to our YouTube channel, and then a couple of days from now, we send out a link to our entire membership. Um, so for those of uh, our members who couldn't join it live, we'll still have an opportunity to gain the uh, very valuable information. Um, so we have two, uh, two great speakers today, and to introduce them is our driving force behind this health and wellness series, which is Gail Patricolo. Gail is the recently retired Director of Integrative Medicine for Beaumont Health, where she built a nationally renowned program. Uh, Gail has now started her next chapter and has founded a company called Health Guided. Uh, and Gail, since we really haven't talked a lot about Health Guided, why don't you take maybe 60 seconds and tell us what you're trying to accomplish with your clients with Health Guided. Oh, well, thank you, Joe. Um, so I, as the director of integrative medicine at Beaumont, I also saw patients individually. Um, I'm a, a hypnotherapist, a guided imagery specialist, and um, I, I do a lot of, of lecturing on stress reduction. And uh, so when I left um, Beaumont, I left with sort of the intention that I would pick up still on my passion, which is to see individual patients. So I have, I've developed a website, I've done a number of podcasts and webinars and, and lectures. Um, and my, I sort of have a unique specialty in that I help uh, create personalized guided meditations for people that are critically ill, um, cancer patients, uh, cardiac patients, uh, just a variety of, or just Right now, a lot of stress reduction that, that people are needing help with. But anyway, thank you, Joe, for mentioning Health Guided. But I'm really thrilled um, to be a part uh, of this, um, this lecture series. And it was fun working with Kelly on the topics. And we actually spent a lot of time saying, OK, what do people really need right now in the middle of a pandemic? And I think we, 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 we chose some um, great topics. Obviously, the vaccine um, was our, our first one, and that was very important to, to most of us. And uh, talking about stress and, and stress, sort of how it affects our minds and um, mental health challenges. And then last week, um, we had a delightful uh, presentation by a nutritionist from Henry Ford on food. Well, the one thing that we knew we were missing was this idea of exercise. Well, we started with the word exercise, but when Kelly and I sort of delved a little deeper, we realized that exercise can be a dirty word for a lot of people. And I, I certainly know in my own practice, um, my patients almost invariably, whether they're coming to me for stress reduction or they have cancer in the middle of the pandemic, everyone's saying, I'm rather gaining weight or I, I, I'm not comfortable doing what I used to do and I can't keep up with, with exercise. And so Kelly and I decided, forget that word. Really what it's all about is this idea of joy of movement. And do, finding something that we like to do with our bodies that's healthy but brings us joy. And I love the fact that Kelly came up with um, having two of our chamber members join us. And I'm really excited for today. Um, after Kelly and I had about an hour conversation with these two gentlemen, we realized this is really going to be joyful. So uh, without further ado, I want to introduce them. First, um, Ashok. Uh, Kumar, did I hope I said that word right? Did I? Okay. Um, Ashok grew up in India. Uh, he completed his engineering undergrad there and his master's at Wayne State in Detroit. He had a very successful career in information technology, working with several Fortune 500 companies before deciding to pursue an entrepreneurial dream. So he now has three title boxing clubs one in Farmington, one in Troy, and one in Birmingham. He's very passionate about doing everything right, 
I love that. His oldest club in Farmington Hills is among the top performing in the country. He has been on the Franchise Advisory Council for Title Boxing and was the 215 Franchisee of the Year. You will often find Ashok at his clubs either working out himself, leading a class, or what he loves doing the most, engaging and interacting with the members, the people that, that come to the club, ensuring that they're getting an exceptional experience every time. And then I'd like to introduce Evan Mountain. And after building a highly successful Fred Astaire dance studio in suburban Detroit, Evan and Lada, his wife, are thrilled to become the area developers for the entire state of Michigan. Wow, congratulations. Eager to open more Fred Astaire dance studios. A Michigan native, Evan ran his family's food uh, brokerage business successfully for over 35 years, growing it by double digits every year. So I think it's interesting that both, both of you came from the business world. So interesting. And a self-described jock who was always interested in dance, he loves the challenge of building the business of dance beyond expectations. And Lada, his wife, grew up in um, Azerbaijan, in Russia, where she started ballroom dancing at the age of 14. And then after spending several years in Germany, she came to the United States teaching dance and competing with students. And I was earlier telling Evan, I'd love to come and, and watch his, his wife perform. They've been married for 12 years and they are excited about opening more studios. Their quote is, we've made our Bloomfield Hill studio one of the top in the country and we want to make Michigan one of the top regions for ballroom dancing nationwide. So thank you to both of you so much for um, spending your time this morning with us and telling us about the different sports and, and, and also really about this whole idea of moving your body joyful, joyfully. So if we, the chat box is open, please feel free to ask questions and I'll be monitoring that. And then when we're done with the moderated part of, this, of the, uh, the morning, then we'll ask questions. So let's start first with Ashok. Many people know that exercise is important, but they find it an unpleasant chore, therefore never really keeping it up. How do you and your staff make it fun and also more, almost more importantly, to make it consistent, to keep coming back? Absolutely, no, great question. First off, thank you uh, for the chamber, Gail, for the opportunity, and it's really good to meet uh, a fellow business owner in the area, Evan. Um, you know, it's a really good question. Um, the simple answer really is, you know, find something you love doing and make that an exercise, right? We talked about dance, uh, boxing, same thing. You know, you come in to beat up something that doesn't hit back. What's not to like about that, right? <laughs> um, you know, we are, we are big on experience. Yes, the, the product, what we deliver is led by professional fighters. So you actually learn the sport uh, without ever getting hit, right? Get fit, not hit, we say. So that is a driver. Uh, and above all, we know all our members. Um, I was at the Birmingham club yesterday and it had been a week. We just launched a new system. And um, I think I was at the 4 p.m. class. We had 14 people in class. I knew 12 of, them, uh, 12 of them by their first names. I knew their stories. And the two people that I spoke to first were the two that I had not met before, before I went to the 12 that I did know. So that's how we get to know every single individual. So it doesn't Hey, how are you? It's, hey, Gail, how are you? You know, you know how's health guided? That is the level of um, commitment we have towards our members. You know, it, we truly form bonds and relationships. And, uh, you know, from an exercise, workout, anything we do, all of us as human beings do well when we are led and guided by an expert, which is what our trainers are. You know, they live and breathe the sport. It's in their blood. They love what they do. And they love um, teaching that to our members. So yeah, I, it's, it's, I've heard so many members walk into the, walk into a boxing club and as they walk in, they say, oh my God, I miss hitting that bag. <laughs> it's an addiction. It's a good addiction. Yeah. Thank you. I, and I it's it's got to be fun. Um, you know, so many health clubs, people go to <laughs> the New Year's resolution is and then you're done by February because it's not fun jumping on a treadmill for most people. You got to find the activity, boxing or dancing, something that you enjoy, or you're not going to stick with it. So, 
Thank you. So Evan, I'm going to um, direct uh, a question for you. So many people find taking time for themselves during the pandemic um, a real difficulty. And in my experience with my clients, it's not just young people or you know, we think of young moms and dads who have kids at home and they're remote learning plus they're trying to work from home. But it's really all age groups. I mean, people, you know, my age, so that are, you know, um, older, sort of feeling isolated and and not going back sort of to their to their exercises and, and almost feeling like self care is selfish. Um, what would you say to encourage them to set time aside to move their bodies and to incorporate self-care? Well, I think it's, you know, I mean, you know, it, you have to take care of yourself first before you can take care of other people. And so doing some kind of activity, you know, for yourself is, should be a priority. I and mean, there's a lot of things that get in the way, you know, I mean, if you have young children and homeschooling and, you know, working from home now, you know. But there are so many things that you absolutely have to make a priority to take care of yourself or that or else the others will suffer. The other things in your life will suffer. So it's really in, it's important. And, you know, with the pandemic and people being isolated in their home, I think that's actually created more of a desire. Um, I'm seeing it from our own numbers you know, here in Michigan with our studios and studios around the country that are seeing more people wanting to get out. I mean, it's, it's surprised me, you know, and, the, and when they fill out information on our website about wanting to take dance lessons, one of the main things they'll say is, you know, I need to find an activity to do with my significant other, or I need to find an activity to do just to get out of the house. I need some socialization. I think that's a, that's a basic need that people have to have is to have some kind of socialization when you're isolated or even just isolated with in your bubble with your close friends, after a while you need a little something else. So, you know, I think that's the priority is take care of yourself too. You know, I'm sure you have work and family responsibilities, but if you know, take care of yourself. You can't take care of everything else. You know, Evan, I loved um, when you just brought up about couples doing it together, um, partners. I, I think that's also something that, you know, we're, we're not able to get out and necessarily going to dinner together or um, do you have a lot of people that do it sort of as a, like a date night kind of? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually we do. I mean, most people come into our studio, they want to learn how to just be comfortable social dancers, you know, so that they, when they're able to go to a wedding or out, you know, and they want to be able to get up and dance and connect, you know, they can, they can do that. And it's not that complicated to learn the basics of different dance uh, styles and, and stuff. So we have a very good system with Fred Astaire to teach people that way. Um, but 50% of our students are, are coming in without a, you know, partner. So, you know, either they're, either they don't have a, a partner or their partner um, doesn't want to dance, you know? So we have, you know, happily married couples, then the, the wife comes in and dances, you know, because it's the activity that she wants to do, the physical activity and, and the connection and such. But we do have a lot of couples, you know, and like I said, 50% of the students that come in, come in without a partner. And, and it's kind of a fallacy. People think that they have to have a partner to come in and learn how to ball and dance or social dance. And that's, that's not true. You know, it's great when you have, if you've got a partner and you can connect and find an activity to do together, but it's not necessary. Well, I saw on your website too that some people actually are setting up first dates at Fred Astaire dance classes. <laughs> yeah. We've done in the past. We were working with um, Match.com, and they would have uh, social nights, you know, where singles would come together. Of course, you know that's kind of out of the question right now to do. <laughs> but we we like to be very safe with the people that are coming in and checking everybody. But that is a it's a great way to again I think socialize, connect with people, find people. Um, you know, even if there isn't a romantic interest there, it's it's still just the socialization. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ishuk, how about you? What 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 are you finding um, with regard to encouraging people for self-care? You know, I really well said, Evan, because uh, so often I find people at our um, uh, at our clubs uh, that are coming in for the first time. And I one of the questions I ask them is kind of what my dad asked me 12 years ago what is the most important thing in your life, right? And um, very rarely, very rarely do I hear me. Uh, the most common answer I hear is my daughter, my, my son, my kids, which is what I told my dad 12 years ago when he asked me. 
Uh, I'd herniated my disc. I was bedridden for three weeks, almost had surgery. And this was a conversation he and I had. And, um, and he asked me a question I'll never forget, right? He said, okay, great. Yes, your, your daughter is the most important thing in life. Tell me what would happen to her if your health went downhill? And I paused for several seconds. So same question, right? So what would happen to whatever it is that he just told me if you didn't take care of yourself? So you do come first. You have to come first. Uh, again, find that fun thing that you, you like to do that is also exercise. So you're not thinking of it as exercise. You're learning dance. You're learning how to box. You're getting the stress out on a heavy bag. You know, make that your addiction. Make that your habit. And I don't know if you've um, read this book. It's called The Power of Habit. You know, the author says, uh, you know, one keystone habit leads to several other good habits. I go to bed early. I wake up early. I go for an early morning jog versus I go to bed late. I wake up late and my whole day is a mess. So find that one good habit and the other habits will follow. Well, Ashok, the next question for you sort of ties into this idea about habits, but I guess we talked a little bit about goal setting. Um, and do you feel that goal setting is important to keep up an activity once they've found something that they like to do, like boxing? And if so, how do we how do we create goals that are realistic? Because so many people make New Year's resolutions. Okay, I'm going to exercise for two hours every day, seven days a week. And, right. and it's not a goal that is realistic. Correct. You know, uh, uh, great question again. So, you know, we've all heard of SMART goals, right? Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound. So you want to be, um, yes, goals are important. Uh, anything we do in life, you know, we go to school, there's, we have a goal in mind, Right. Um, goals are important, but have realistic goals and have, when it comes to your fitness, have kind of a fun goal. So what I mean by that is I've had people that say, oh, I have a reunion coming up. I need to fit into my clothes. That's a great goal, right? I'm going to Mexico and I want to look good on the beach. Good goal to have, right? Um, I'm going to run a half marathon, right? Um, so I need to be fit to do that. Uh, those are goals that you could... Um, you could achieve over time, you know, and again, you need a time bound it. Okay, my marathon's happening in October. It is now May. I have months to kind of get ready for it, right? You know, I have a story. Um, Liana uh, Fakuri is her name. She is one of our members. Uh, she's had uh, cerebral palsy. So she's never walked in her life, except when she was a little kid. And she was in the news uh, last year, just before COVID. And her goal, I get goosebumps telling you the story. Her goal was to walk to get a high school degree. Extremely bright girl. She's, you know, she, you know, she wants, um, uh, you know, be in the healthcare field, I guess, down the line. But um, her goal was to walk to receive her high school degree. And uh, she, somehow she decided she wanted to box. So there's several videos of her with trainers boxing in her wheelchair. And she always posts pictures of a heavy bag, of her boxing gloves. Uh, and that was her goal. And you know what? She did it. She was actually on local news channels. I think Fox 2 ran a thing on her where she actually walked with the walker to get a high school degree. Right. So get a goal that you want to hit. Have, have, have realistic time, you know, when you're going to hit it and take steps towards it. And, you know, we're here to help you get there. Oh, that's a wonderful story. Really heartwarming. Evan, what, how do you feel about this whole idea of goals? Well, it's part of the way that we teach. Um, you know, we teach in gradual steps. And my instructors are trained to ask the students, you know, when they first come in, you know, why are you here? What's your goal? You know, are you, is there a particular event? Are you getting ready for a wedding? Are you getting ready to go on a cruise? Is there, you know, whatever the goal might be, you know, we find that out and then start to help them get there. So, and within our teaching system, it's based on different levels. So you start off, you know, learning um, a beginner level of a rumba or a, a tango or a swing. And then you gradually, you know, the next goal is to get into the intermediate level, you know, and there's charts and things that we keep on every student. So we help them accomplish those things, you know, gradually getting to that point, you know, to where they want. So it's part of, you know, it's part of the motivation too, is when students have a goal, they will stick around. It has to be fun. They have to enjoy it. But if they have a goal, you know, something that you want to accomplish and the teachers are accountable to that, you know, to them, you know, it's like, okay, or making the student accountable to those goals. Okay, you 
wanted to get ready for whatever, or, you know, all right, let's, this is what we need to do to take you along that journey and to get you, you know, ready for that. So that, yeah, so absolutely goals are a very important part of a learning process. And I think accountability, what you brought up is also extremely important. That's a good point. Um, Evan, you know, there are some people that just simply right now can't go out. Like I just did a, a breast cancer support group, uh, uh, a presentation on stress reduction. And, and these, uh, these women are too compromised. They wouldn't be able to go into either one of your, your studios. And we were sort of brainstorming about, well, how can you still move your body um, joyfully? And one, one woman said, well, you know, we put on Motown music and I cook to it, you know, and I move around my kitchen. And what, what would you say, you know, with regards to, to ballroom dancing to that woman or that man that it's simply right now not safe for them sure. to exercise with, with, in a, in, with others. Right, and, and uh, absolutely. It's something that we've seen, you know, there are students of ours that are back and very active because they realize how safe it is, but there are others that, you know, for various reasons have not come back or are concerned or have different um, underlying issues that make it difficult. You know, we work with um, individuals who teach individuals in wheelchairs how to dance and they are very susceptible to things. And we work with breast cancer uh, patients too. And, and yes, they have to be very careful. So one of the things that Fred Astaire Corporate did right away uh, when everything started shutting down back in March is they developed an online uh, learning system, an online dance lessons called Life's Better When You Dance uh, or the acronym, acronym, acronym of uh, lbwyd.com. You can go there and, you know, there are dozens and dozens of different dance styles and exercise, you know, things, you know, Pilates, uh, bar classes, all kinds of stretching, fitness classes to dance. And you can learn from home. You know, you can still stay active and do those things, you know, from home, you know, safely until you're ready or in a position that you feel, you know, comfortable coming out to a studio, you know, to a, a fitness center, to a boxing center, you know, to a dance studio and start doing, but you can learn from home. And, and it also works as a supplement for your dance lessons. You can, you know, practice in your, in your kitchen while you're making dinner, you know, put on a little tango and learn some of the basics of that too, so. Okay, super, thank you. And it shook, I mean, I remember um, years ago when my son was a teenager, a neighbor gave him a punching bag and he hung it in our garage. And I was always afraid the whole garage was gonna fall down with, with the weight of the bag and his punching, but what, what, what advice do you give to someone that just isn't quite ready, doesn't feel comfortable or really the, the can't get out right now? No matter what, keep moving, right? Um, yes, safety is extremely important. This pandemic is no joke. You, you need to, especially if you have um, elders living with you that, uh, that, may be comprom that you may compromise by going out. We, I understand we get it, but you've got to, again, take care of yourself. And uh, safety is important, but what happens to your health if you don't take care of yourself? right? Um, online workouts, a really good way to do it, be it dance, be it boxing. Um, title has a title on demand. We're doing, uh, we've started um, doing boxing class. We've always had boxing classes for Parkinson's fighters, but those classes we do online now because they are more compromised than others, uh, more high risk. Um, so yes, find that activity. Uh, we do have people hanging heavy bags at home. We can teach you how, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and you could do it that way too. Absolutely. And, and take a chance and come out and take a look. If you're someone that is just afraid to get in, which is, you know, completely understandable, um, come out to the, you know, to Fred Astaire, come out to Tidal, talk to us about our protocols uh, and make sure you're comfortable. If you are, great, we'd love to have you in. I guess in the same vein, are you, are you finding that people in the past month or so are more comfortable coming out? Are, are you seeing an increase in activity? Yes, yes. I mean, more and more people are getting more comfortable now. Uh, some are waiting for the, you know, for, for vaccines. Um, um, others, you know, it truly is, you know, I'm, I'm going to Mexico. I'm visit, going down south to visit my folks. I just have to be home. I just don't want to take any chances. But as the numbers go down, as people, more people get vaccinated, uh, there is definitely more of an interest in getting back. And actually, you know, to, to Evan's point, people, when, when they come in, they're super excited. They, they're so happy to be back. <laughs> Evan, are you finding that too? Yeah, actually, um, it, it's, it's really encouraging every week. We're seeing more and more, you know, I'm seeing more inquiries on our website and from our advertising and stuff. People are 
you know, it's up to 17, 18 people every week that are contacting us looking for dance lessons to come in and do something. Um, and, you know, we're teaching more lessons. We're getting back to normal, back to where we were before. Now, normal in that, you know, as far as the number of lessons, we still have to be very safe when people do come into our studios, just like Ashok is like, you know, you're, we're making sure people are wearing masks or shields and, you know, hand sanitizing, and we have to follow the protocols, you know, to, for, for our students, I mean, for our staff and students, I, I mean, that's the number one for me, is I want to make sure they're healthy, and they're safe, and comfortable, you know, so, but as vaccines are out there, as the numbers within Michigan are going down, you know, that uh, people are starting to feel more comfortable starting to go out a little bit more. And I think that's very encouraging. I, as a business owner, I, I find it very encouraging to see, so. Yes. Yeah, I think it's really hopeful. It's giving people a feeling of hope. Um, Ashok, I know that boxing and of course dancing too are fun and this whole idea of, of joy and movement, but I know there's also other um, really significant health benefits. Can you describe to us sort of what are those benefits for boxing? Sure. Um, yes. I mean, um, you know, cardio, of course, is huge, right? All of us need to be heart healthy. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, the whole hit concept, the high intensity interval training where you get your heart rate up and you keep it there in a healthy way, um, you know, for a certain period of time makes you fitter from a cardio perspective. So that's the whole goal of our, our classes is to slowly boost your heart rate up and keep it there for about 20, 25, 30 minutes and then slowly bring it down. So cardio health. Um, resistance training because you're coming in to hit the 100 pound bag and every time you punch the bag it sends shock waves to your muscles right um, so that is another big benefit and um, boxing is as much an exercise for your mind as it is for your body um, it is um, you know when you're learning the defensive moves um, and the offensive moves uh, it, it, a lot of your mind is being used um, so you know they call it the sweet science for a reason right and, and it's actually the only sport uh, that athletes and other um, sports do for fitness. Um, so yeah, a lot of benefits. And again, in the end, I go back to uh, making sure that, uh, you know, start off on that one good habit. If you've been waiting through the pandemic, we all know it, um, you know, start that one good habit and others will follow. And another huge benefit, uh, and you can talk to this, Gail, much more than I can, is just general exercise, whatever it is, you know, your, your fun workout releases endorphins, right? Um, releases these hormones in your body that make you happier, make you sleep better, make you feel better. Uh, it's huge. Um, stress relief. Um, I have so many stories. Bia is another member of Bia. She um, um, ex um, very nervous about anything, about meeting people, high stress in her life. And she happened to be driving on the street and she saw Title Boxing Club and she almost didn't come in but she did for whatever reason. Uh, I'll make the long story short by saying we found a photograph on our Facebook page where she had a little title boxing club card held out and said, for some reason I came into this boxing club a year ago, I'm still here and I'm so much happier. <laughs> That's great, great story. Evan, how about you, the, the health benefits of dancing? Well, I mean, it's a low impact aerobic activity. And that's, that's an, I think most people are kind of surprised when they come in um, and they start moving around and dancing. And it's like suddenly, you know, they, especially this time of year, maybe you have a sweater on, it's like you're taking the sweater off and starting to sweat, you know, um, it's, so you've got that part of it. And I think that's what, you know, people think of first, but the other benefits, um, which are particularly important as, as we start to age is one, you need the core strength. You need the balance and flexibility. And that's what dancing is going to be able to do for you because you have to move and we show you how to move. You know, Those are the extra parts of it. Um, the confidence, like Ashok talked about, I mean, for somebody to take up uh, a sport and, and to start to learn it, you know, and, and I see it with students coming in all the time. They're afraid you know, for all kinds of reasons why they think they can't dance. You know, Maybe it was a um, uh, middle school experience <laughs> that they got on the dance floor and didn't feel comfortable. But, you know, for reasons, they, you know, they come in and they start building their confidence of learning how to dance and learning to move either with their dance instructor or with their significant other or other students that they, you know, they've met and such. So the confidence part, and that also leads into the social part. I mean, that is one of the biggest benefits that I think 
people don't realize. You know, I mean, sure, it's a physical activity and it's, it's, it's something you can do, you know, in a social setting. But the social interaction with somebody, the actual connection, you know, the physical connection in a safe way of, you know, holding somebody, you know, and working with them and moving around the floor, you know, is very important. It's important in all aspects of life that you have to have, you know, in order to be a healthy, you know, mentally healthy and physically healthy person. So, yeah. Evan, is there, has there been any research on dance and memory? I would also think sort of like what Ashok was talking about as far as using your mind. I mean, you have to mem sort of memorize steps. And so does it help with cognitive uh, ability? It does, and, and we've, there's been a lot of research that's been done through um, I, the journals, I forgot the different medical journals and stuff that's been posted, posted on it. Um, and we've worked with the um, Alzheimer's Association about that too, is that you, your cognitive memory, you know, because some people start to decline, but with dancing, what it helps do is you are moving, okay? As a man, you know, if I'm leading, I have to be hearing the music, I've got to be thinking of the dance steps that I'm doing and I'm going to be working or moving, you know, moving with my partner around the dance floor, trying not to crash into somebody else. So your brain is really, you know, going around quickly as you're doing this and feeling more comfortable with it. As a woman, it actually becomes even more that you're thinking because you have to be able to follow somebody who is leading you subtly around the floor, still feeling the music and doing what you want to do. So, you know, the cognitive part of this, and there's been lots of studies that are out there um, over the last 10 years of how dancing helps somebody with their cognitive memory. And it, you know, I mean, they talk about it and they compare it and, you know, of, you know, is it better than crossword puzzles? Yes, is it better than this and this and this and this? Because your brain is moving. And, and that's something you, you won't realize until you start dancing as to how beneficial it is. So actually I Keith, uh, did a big documentary a couple of years ago about um, dancing or about Alzheimer's, and we were part of it. Is is how dancing is able to help you know people with Alzheimer's or help offset the potential of Alzheimer's and dementia. So. It's interesting, really. It's not just body, but it's body, mind, and spirit. Yeah. Lifts both both boxing and dance are in very very different ways, but they're similar. In, in that 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 they really mind body and, and spirit. Right. People think um, of it, I mean, and they think, well, it looks like fun, but then they find out all the other benefits, you know, of boxing and dancing and what that really adds to your life. So. Yeah. Thank. Okay. Thank you, Ashok. Um, tell us. I mean, I know both organizations are are being extremely careful during the pandemic. You talked a little bit about you know, some of your precautions, but what else would you want uh, people to know that might be concerned about coming in? Sure thing. Um, uh, so several things, oh gosh, there's so many protocols. Uh, first thing we had to do was we had to have at least 30 to 45 minutes in between our classes. Earlier before COVID, we would have classes back to back, 15 minute gap, people come in, they leave, the next class starts. Now we need 30 to 45 minutes because we deep clean um, everything, anything that's touched by a member of the club, uh, gets wiped down, all the bags get wiped down, the front desk, the bathrooms, um, you get a cleaning in between classes. Uh, members are asked to come no uh, earlier than 10 minutes before class and leave no later than 10 minutes after class. So we have the time to do the deep clean. Uh, they have to uh, register for class ahead of time so we can meet our capacity counts. Uh, even people coming to um, take a look at the, uh, the studio, right? We um, have online appointment calendars um, and they have to come in by appointment. So we, we are very big on that. Uh, people mask up while entering, mask up when leaving. Uh, we found that sometimes when they're boxing with the mask on, um, you know, the, the oxygen becomes an issue. <laughs> so um, we do allow them to take off the mask by the bag, but we have separated the bag six feet apart. So we had to take down bags and reduce capacity. And the trainers were all actually trained by Title Corporate to keep the members right by the back so they're not moving around a lot. And the trainers also, and we were so up close and personal before, but now we learn to teach from a distance. Um, so that training has happened, um, you know, and um, what else? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's about, I mean, take a look. I mean, when you get a chance, if you're able to set up an appointment, come come take a look. Oh, and then staff is all, are always wearing shield masks uh, at all the time. 
Thank you. Evan, how about for dance? Absolutely. It's the same, similar thing. I mean, we all have to follow, you know, safety protocols in, in order to keep our staff and our employees, you know, our employees and, and uh, students uh, safe. So, you know, of course, you know, we're wearing, you know, we're wearing masks, we're hand sanitizing, temperature checks, and all those, you know, things that are important to do with everybody that comes in um, into our studio. And, and just like a truck, we know our students, you know, it's not just a drop in thing where, you know, somebody's going to come in and we never see them again or know them. You know, we, we make sure we know everybody that comes in and we, and we follow the right protocols. One of the other things that we ended up doing, or I ended up doing, investing in um, air scrubbers for our HVAC systems to make sure that, you know, the, um, the air scrubbers, according to the technology they, they told me about, is that it will kill 98% of any airborne uh, contaminants and surface contaminants. So it's like, it's worth the investment, you know, to keep everybody safe and to make sure. Um, our Bloomfield Hills studio is 6,000 square feet. Uh, we've got one ballroom that's 4,000 square feet um, and then another one 1,000 square feet. So it's, you know, we're able to keep people separate into their, you know, they've got their instructor, instructor um, if they have a dance partner, they're with their dance partner and their instructor and they're, you know, just like, you know, that in that little bubble, they usually have about a thousand square feet for themselves to move around in and stuff. And of course they are wearing masks. You know, we have them wear masks and, and they don't like it. I don't like it, but it's, you know, you start to get used to it, you know, it's, um, you know, but it is something that, you know, it's important to us right now, the way it is. So. I don't think people realize the expense that uh, businesses like yours have had to go to with these air cleaners. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it really is probably astronomical. It, it is. And, and to be honest, I mean, uh, you know, we, we're all in this together, right? I mean, we're all struggling in different ways. Um, it, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, the government has stepped in to help. Uh, the local cities have stepped in to help. One of our members, Heather, she works for the city of Birmingham. And she actually approved our city permits. <laughs> I mean, our, our, our permits for our, for, our, for our location in Birmingham. So she stopped by the front desk the other day and said, you know what, we have a garage full of PPE stuff. Would you like some? And we were like, yes, please. So she stopped by with a bunch of goodies for us. So, you know, we've had the help too. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm, I'm always a positive thinking, forward thinking person. So I know we'll get past it. I know we'll live to talk about it one day, how we mask up all the time, right? Um, you know, but you know, again, take, take time to take care of yourself. And uh, especially now as things ease up, so, you know, spring is coming, hopefully around the corner soon. This is Michigan, we don't know, but uh, you know, it's more chance to be outdoors. You know, we have garage doors too, by the way. So we plan to open up the doors all the time uh, in the warmer weather, so it'll be even more safe. Uh, Evan, will you also do you have do you ever do anything outside when the weather gets nice or is it not necessary because your spaces are so huge? Well, our spaces are huge, but I mean, last summer we weren't able to teach. You know, we weren't able to do anything, um, but we were, we were allowed to do classes outside. So we started teaching out on our front lawn on Franklin Road, you know, and so <laughs> a lot, you know, to have, you know, classes outside. So um, hopefully we won't have to do that again, but you know, it's still a way for people to connect. Um, you know, we, we, our studios are large enough right now that, you know, it's, it's fine. Um, now in the past, the way we would teach is we would teach private lessons and we would have group lessons in the evenings and we'd have dance parties. I have not brought back dance parties yet. You know, that's not, that's gonna, not gonna happen for a while. You know, we, do, we are starting to do some group lessons, but they're very different than the way, the way they were before, so. It's, you know, it's just, we'll, we'll roll with the tide right now and, you know, do what we need to do to make sure people are safe, you know, and people can still stay healthy. Well, it sounds like you both are really resilient um, uh, owners. So um, I commend you on that. Danielle Workman, um, thank you, Danielle. I think you've been here all four weeks as well. <laughs> Um, uh, your question was, what special equipment is needed? So um, I don't know, Ashok, do you want to start? So um, all you would need are a pair of boxing gloves and hand wraps. So we protect your hands by wrapping it, and then you put on boxing gloves. Um, regular workout clothes, tennis shoes, running shoes are going to work fine. Uh, and you need uh, what's called a heavy bag boxing gloves. So you get different kinds of boxing gloves. You need heavy bag boxing gloves that are safe uh, for you to use on a heavy bag. And yeah, set up a time, we'd love to show you when you come in. 
Uh, ours, it's pretty simple, you know, just come in, come in and uh, learn how to dance. It's not a, there's not really any special equipment you have to have. Um, usually I tell women when they're, when they're coming in for their first lesson, um, you know, wear something comfortable. You know, it could be, you know, it could be a skirt, or it could be, you know, slacks, you know. Um, I don't recommend wearing high heels the first time you're coming in. You know, flats are fine. I do suggest that they, you know, for people when they're first coming in is not to wear athletic shoes because our wood floors, when you're on a, a rubber sole uh, shoe, athletic shoe, and you start to turn, you could end up twisting your knee or something like that. We want to prevent that. So if it's a leather sole, you know, shoe, that's, you know, that's perfect, a lower heel kind of thing. Um, you really don't need to get into dance shoes. We sell those. You don't need those right away at the beginning. You know, later you will feel more comfortable and there's lots of great dance shoes that are designed, you know, to help you move on the floor easier, but it's not something you need to start off with. So, so Evan, you actually have a store. And so what sort of things do you sell? Well, through the Fred Astaire website, we've got, you know, all kinds of, we sell dance shoes, we sell dresses, we practice wear and things like that, that you would need, you know, that you might want, um, you know, dance shoes, uh, you know, for men and for women, usually on a dance shoe, a ball and dance shoe has a suede sole on it. And they find that, you know, it's a, a full leather, complete leather. It could be a little slippery. A rubber sole could be a little sticky, but a suede tends to be perfect on a wooden dance floor. So that's the same for a female, you know, uh, for a woman's shoe or a man's shoe and stuff. So. And we also, for ladies, we sell dress gowns, you know, for <laughs> which are full of lots of sparkles and all kinds of different things. They're very beautiful things. So things that you would see on Dancing with the Stars kind of dresses. Oh, fun. And the Shook, I see you've got title boxing apparel. Do you sell that as well? Yes. Do you have the yeah. Store? yeah, we do. We do. Uh, we have retail. We have, of course, boxing gloves and hand wraps. Uh, and uh, t-shirts and hoodies and all, all the good stuff. Okay, great. Well, we have another question from Sarah Parker. Um, do you have to be in great shape to start boxing? I hear it's an intense workout. You know, it, it's such an, a great question because it's, it's, the, it's one of the most common misconceptions is that, you know, let me start, let me start walking first or let me start jogging first. Um, you actually start boxing to get fit, right? So, um, the, the, the nice thing about the way the workouts are designed, you're not, you're not actually punching to the beat, right? It's not one pace for everyone. So what I mean by that is, let's say, you know, we have a round going on, you're, doing a, you're throwing a jab, cross, and a hook. So you can go jab, cross, hook, or you can go jab, cross, hook. You can go as hard and as fast as you want. You can make it as intense as you want it to be. And the nice thing is that wherever you are, wherever you're starting, our goal is every time you come in, to push you out of that comfort zone just that little bit. So you leave with a smile on your face, drenched in sweat, but with a big smile on your face, you can come back. And interestingly, that needle keeps moving. So just my own personal story, when I started boxing for the first time eight years ago, I think my first class, I burnt about four or 500 calories. Now I'm burning over a thousand calories. Same class, but it's doubled intensity for me now because I'm able to do more in the same time. So it doesn't matter where you are, uh, you can get started and you can get better. What about ages? So um, like, do you have to be 18 years and older for both of your locations or how does that we work? We have members as young as seven. Uh, my daughter box, started boxing when she was seven. We have members as old as, gosh, in the early eighties, um, our Parkinson's fighters. Uh, Judy Lindstrom, another great story. She met Joe Lewis at one of the airports years ago when she was a little kid. And finally, you know, she decided that she needed to box and she happened to see us, Birmingham. Uh, and then she walked in. A year and a half later, she is uh, several dress sizes down. She trains twice with the trainer and takes classes. So no, age, age no barrier, your fitness level no barrier, everyone can get started. This, this truly is for everyone. Evan, what about yeah, with us, I mean, I would say the general age is 40 and above for our students, but we have teenagers. I've got to, you know, I'm working with high school kids that are in theater classes and they want to learn how to move, you know, for that, for musical theater and such. And so, you know, we've got a kid's class. Um, our Bloomfield Hill studio or Bloomfield Township studio is, is um, the instructors are primarily Eastern European and Eastern Europeans, you know, they love to ballroom dance. So 
we've got a whole group of you know of young dancers as young as four years old you know that will come uh -huh. in to private lessons and such you know so but the majority of our students are you know usually 40 and above or you've got the 20 30s you know that are you know looking to learn their wedding dance and such so it's a little bit of everything you know just like a shucks you know it's you get all kinds of people that want to you know to box and to learn and to stay active and healthy and dance Okay, great. We have another question. Um, Ashok, you mentioned having back problems. Is boxing good for those of us with chronic back pain? And then we'll let, and also what about dancing? So how about you start Ashok? Sure thing, yeah. And again, you, you, you'll know more, you know, being a physician yourself, you'll know more about this than I do. But, you know, back problems are one of the most common things out there, right? Um, and for me personally, what caused it was bad posture, a uh, weak core, a desk job, uh, it's sports too, you know, but I am stronger now and I haven't had any back episodes in like six years. And I used to have them once every few weeks before, just because my core is stronger, my back muscles are stronger. So um, it actually helps um, get your core and your, your center section a lot stronger. So it can help you. Of course, you, you, you may have to modify some of the exercises like I do. And uh, you do want to definitely check with the doctor to make sure there are those individuals that shouldn't do a certain activity no matter what. But if you have to go ahead from the doctor, absolutely boxing can help you. It is a full body workout. Super. Yeah, it's, what about dance? It's the same thing. I mean, with dance, you know, it's, it's something we want you to be safe. And well, you know, at the beginning when you're coming in too, is, you know, is there any kind of health issue? You know, is there something with your back, your shoulder, your knee, you know, what is going on, you know, with that? So we have to be, you know, very conscious of that. But as you move, as you, you know, in dancing, if you're stretching, if you're moving, you know, working on your core strength, you know, you will start to gradually build those areas up, you know. Um, it's not something you don't have to do, you know, you can't do. Um, some of the issues though, if you've got, you know, if you've got a bad knee or a bad, you know, uh, problem with your shoulder, you may have to limit, you know, raising your arm up at that point when you're dancing. Um, but I like to tell everybody, you know, we, we started a program, um, I guess uh, Cheryl, Cheryl, who is the uh, co-founder of this with me, it's called Dance Mobility, where we work with individuals in wheelchairs and teach them and amputees how to dance, you know, also. And I can, I tell people, you know, everybody can dance, you know, there's no excuses. So if you're in a wheelchair, you can learn how to dance. I, you know, I took uh, uh, one of our students and one of our instructors to Germany last year for the world championships of wheelchair dancing and stuff. So, you know, learn how to dance, no matter how, you know, where. So you just have to have the desire to do that, to box, you know, to do something, to stay active and, and have fun. Oh, that's wonderful that you're able to work with people like that are wheelchair bound. Um, so Tom just said, sorry, I had to step away, um, but is once a week enough for boxing for those with limited availability? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's, that, it's that saying, right? I mean, doing something is better than doing nothing. So Yes, uh, and we have, so we have, again, the whole range of individuals, right? We have individuals that all they do is box. That's all they have the time for. We have individuals that are avid fitness people. They just try different things that come in once a week, right? Uh, and whatever your schedule allows, yeah, make it happen. So uh, Joe just asked a question. Evan, how many classes would it take for a guy with three left feet to at <laughs> least not totally embarrass himself on the dance floor I'm just asking for a friend, though, he said. <laughs> that could be me. Your friend could be me, by the way. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. uh, it, uh, Joe, I, 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 I hope I can help your friend. So, um, <laughs> you know, what? That's a, that's a challenging question. Everybody learns at a different pace. You know, I can't just say, hey, in six months, you're going to be a comfortable social dancer. It depends, like anything, is how much you practice, you know, too. Um, it's, um, I, I like to use the analogy, if you're gonna learn a, uh, a second language, or if you're gonna learn to play a musical instrument and you only practice once a week, it's gonna take you a lot longer, you know? So, um, you know, it's, it just depends. I mean, generally, our, if somebody follows what we say in about six months or maybe a little bit more, you know, if they're coming in and they're practicing at, practicing at home, they take their lesson once a week, maybe twice a week, you know, in about six months, they're going to feel very comfortable. They're going to go to a wedding and they, they still may be doing just the basic dance steps, 
you know, to the music, but their friends are going to be going, oh my gosh, you should be ready for dancing with, you look like you're on Dancing with the Stars now because they just learned some of the basic moves and, and, and have that confidence on the dance floor to move around and knowing what they're doing and stuff. So, so Joe, please pass that on to your friend. I'm sure he or she might appreciate that, so. <laughs> Thank you for that advice, Evan. So <clears throat> my friend um, has two daughters and, and his greatest fear that keeps him up at night is the <laughs> daddy-daughter dance when everybody is watching at the wedding reception. Yep, yep. So you may be getting a call from my friend at some point. <laughs> well, make sure they for you, you know, that they tell me it came from you and, and I'll, I'll take care of them, so. <laughs> but Joe, you play soccer, you can't have three left feet. <laughs> you know, there, um, you know, it is, I usually look and I'll ask the guys, because um, this happens all the time, is that they say they can't dance. Well, you know, if they, if they, as they're an athlete or, or play musical instruments, they have the movement, they just haven't learned how to dance. They haven't learned the fundamentals, you know. Um, if you're going to golf, you have to learn the basics of the swing of how to hit the golf ball, you know. And so if you haven't learned the basics of dancing, yeah, you're going to get on the floor and the music sounds great and you start to move around and like, oh, this is fun. People are looking at me. I don't know what to do. And then the music changes like, I don't know what to do. So it's just, it's just learning some of the basic fundamentals so that you can be a comfortable social dancer. Thank you. One, one last question. It's a really good one. Um, do either of your organizations have a free trial class or promotions for people that are just starting out? Sure. Yes, we do. Um, so we, um, post COVID again, we, we, we don't share equipment anymore. We used to have gloves that we would loan out and then clean, but we've done away with that. Um, so yeah, come in, uh, we can get you a basic pair of clubs and set you up for the free class. Yeah, we've motion too that, you know, I mean, your first lesson is free. I don't want somebody to, you come into the dance studio. I want you, you know, if you're coming in by yourself or with your partner, um, I want you to experience, you know, what dancing is about to make sure it's, it's something that you enjoy. It's something that you like the studio, you like the instruction, you, you like the way we teach, you feel comfortable with it, um, you know, before you invest in, in taking dance lessons and such. So you gotta make sure you, you're, it's the right thing for you. Um, you know, there are also, I mentioned earlier, is the online uh, platform that Fred Astaire likes better when you dance. Um, you know, they have seven day free trial, you know, so you can sign up and, and st for seven days, start watching videos and dance videos, you know, and dance instruction at home. So yeah, we want, we want to make sure, you know, that you like it and, and we're confident that you will like it uh, once you come in and, and work with the instructor that you'll stick around. But, you know, the first lesson for us is great. So. The only request I have is please call ahead of time or just go to our website. There's a link to set up a time again for capacity limits. So we know that we, we can set aside that time for you when you come in and we just focused on you too. Yeah, good point, Ashok. Yeah, it's we need to, same thing as we need to assign you to an instructor right. and they have both, you know, for you. We don't want you just sitting around waiting and such, so. Correct. So um, one last question, Dan Gilbert is wondering, the tango, do people still learn it? Where would you do the tango? Uh, Al Pacino did it at a bar in Scent of a Woman. Very cool. I love that movie, by the way. But anyway. <laughs> Well, yes, people still learn the tango, and um, but this is the truth of the matter, and it's a very fun dance. It's a very dramatic dance, um, expressive dance. The truth of the matter is that you're not going to be at very many events or, you know, that they're going to play tango music. So it's good to learn it. It's fun to learn it. It's a very fun dance, but you're not necessarily going to, at the next wedding or bar mitzvah, or, you know, suddenly they're not going to start playing tango music. So but it is helpful with the other dance styles that you learn. You know, all dance styles relate in one way or another. And that's something that you, you start to understand as you're dancing, but it is, it's a very fun, and it was a great in the movie and it's great for the dance business <laughs> because everybody remembers that. <laughs> so Evan, I have a question for you uh, very quickly and then uh, Gail, I'll let you wrap up. But um, so obviously uh, boxing is very much an individual activity um, dancing is not. Do you have to have a partner to take dance classes at Fred Astaire or can you come in as a single? 
Um, well, yeah, earlier I mentioned that too, is, is that 50% of our students that come in do not have a dance partner um, because, you know, or they, you know, either they're, maybe they're married and their spouse does not want to come in. So the dance instructor is your dance partner. Um, when we go to competitions around the United States, uh, dance competitions, uh, usually most 95% of the time, you are competing with your instructor as a, it's called a pro-am. So the, you know, amateur student and the professional, you're dancing together and, and being judged, you know, on your dance style, if it's a tango or a swing or whatever, but, you know, you know, and there are also a lot of people that come in with their daughters getting ready for their weddings and such too. So. Well, so might, you actually have that. a new, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Gail, please. Well, I, we just had one more comment uh, related to the tango. And I think it would be a good fundraiser for you, Joe, because Dan Gilbert said he would pay to see you do the tango. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, Ashok, please. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I wanted to uh, say yes, but boxing, you don't need a partner, but we have families come and box together all the time. I have families of, there's not a lot of activities, of workout activities that you can do as a family. Uh, but it truly is a bonding experience. Um, so we've had, before COVID, we've had corporate events where entire teams would come in and box together. Um, so it, yeah, husband, wife, we have kids, moms. Um, Angela Wilson, our newest member yesterday, she has a 12-year-old and a 7-year-old, 11-year-old and a 7-year-old, and the 11-year-old that class with her wants to continue doing classes with her, so. Well, that does sound fun to do that as a, a family. Well, We've run out of time and I really want to thank both of you um, for joining us. I would really encourage people to go on their websites. I mean, I did some a little bit of research before we had our initial talk and, and I'm really fascinated by both of your businesses and wish you all the luck and thrilled that you're seeing that more and more people are now coming out and it certainly makes me feel hopeful. But anyway, thank you. This is the end of our, our healthcare um, series and uh, thank you to the chamber for allowing me to be a part of it. I learned myself throughout it and I um, wish you all all the best and uh, can't can't wait to see you guys and hug you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully at some point. It'll be thank, you. thank you for the opportunity Kelly, Gail, Joe, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for joining Everybody us have a great, today. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.